Power Up with NSA North Texas, a show about finding, hearing, and maximizing valuable insights from some of the world's leading business and lifestyle speakers. Each week, International Keynote Speaker and National Speakers Association North Texas Chapter President Betty Coffey sits down with some of the most exciting speakers this side of the globe to hear from these subject matter experts what's making a difference in business today and learn all there is to know about people, profits, and productivity in business from some of the world's best motivators. This is Power Up with NSA North Texas. And now, here's your host, Betty Coffey. Hi everyone, this is Betty Coffey, President for National Speakers Association North Texas Chapter. And I welcome you to the show today. The NSA National Speakers Association is the premier organization for professional speakers. Our members reach audiences every day as thought leaders, as authors, as coaches, as consultants, as trainers, as educators, as humorists. And we do it every, every day. I'm so lucky to be the president of our NSA North Texas chapter because we have some of the top professional speakers in our organization. It's an honor to rub elbows with them like I'm going to with Bob Phillips here in a minute. This show is all about, it's going to give you the opportunity to hear the cutting edge topics, some of the issues, some of the problems that companies, leadership, um, everybody wants to have an answer for. And that's what this show is all about. So my guest today is Mr. Bob Phillips. I'm thrilled to have him. Welcome, Bob. Welcome to, to our here. show. Thank it's you, good Betty. to have you. It's great to be here. Thank you. Bob's going to talk to us today about helping organizations create amazing customer service. And wait to hear the whole idea about amazing customer service coming from Bob. Um, we're going to learn about the practice, practicing the fish philosophy, which organizations work with to help them create amazing internal and external customer service, uh, to have a stronger teamwork, to have better communication, and have a more fun work experience, which, you know what, we all need to do. We spend a lot of time at work every day. It needs to be fun, right? Proactive. Bob Phillips is a native Texan who began his career in the Texas tourism industry at the early age of 12 years old. Wow, your mom and dad had you out there early. <laughs> Where, he's, where he worked at Aquarina Springs in San Marcos. Those of you that are Texans, I bet you remember that. Aquarina Springs in San Marcos, which was one of Texas's original tourist attractions. The highlight, this is the highlight of 10 years working there, was the dubious honor of working with Ralph, the famous swimming pig. I love Ralph. I've seen pictures of Ralph. He was the true star of Aquarina Springs. Bob then moved to the Dallas-Fort Worth area in 1978 and began a successful career in the Convention and Visitor Bureau business with the cities of Grapevine, Irving, and Addison. He has twice been the chair of the Dallas-Fort Worth Area Tourism Council. He is the past chair of the Texas Travel Industry Association and uh, past chair of the Governor's Office of Tourism Advisory Committee, a lot of chair organizations, and was elected by Texans as a delegate to the first ever White House Conference on Tourism. That's an accomplishment. That's great. He is also, I'm very proud to say, on our board of directors with the NSA North Texas chapter. In his spare time, he enjoys spending time with his lovely wife, Susan. I've met her. She's an absolute little doll. Um, you guys have been married for 34 years. Mm -hmm. Yes, happily well, married for I'm, 34 years. I'm proud of you. Okay, so Thank let's you. get going. Um, helping organizations create amazing customer service. So that's what you speak about. So why fish? Why the fish, why the fish philosophy and how was it created? Well, the fish philosophy, think of it this way. It's a philosophy that fulfills the basic needs of human beings who in turn will fulfill the needs of an organization. And the guys that started this were the fishmongers out at Pike Place Fish Market out in Seattle, Washington. Oh, wow. And uh, they had one of the worst jobs in the world, on their feet 12 hours a day, hands in and out of crushed fish. ice, selling fish. Yeah. And uh, they created a job that was one of the most fantastic places to work, synergy among themselves. It spilled over to the customers and they sold a ton of fish. But the guy who made them famous was a guy named John Christensen a filmmaker from Minneapolis, Minnesota. John had been seeking an alive and engaged workplace. <clears throat> uh -huh. He happened to be out in Seattle doing some other things. 
in his hotel room that morning before he left that afternoon, he asked the bellman, what should I be seeing while I'm here for a couple of hours in Seattle? And the guy said, sir, you need to go over to Pike Place Fish Market and see what's going on over there. <laughs> so he took a walk over there, looked around, fish stands, coffee stands, but only one fish stand had a group of six people deep around it. They were laughing, they were hollering, they were throwing peop fish over people's heads. And he walked over to get a closer look. And when he looked inside this crowd of people in the center, uh -huh. there was one of the fishmongers. He had gone over to a barrel and got a crawfish. And he went over and put it on the shirt of this little boy, about four years old, Ooh. standing next <laughs> to his mom. The little boy looked down at that crawfish and screamed bloody murder, grabbed his mother's leg. And the fishmonger went over immediately and grabbed that crawfish, took it back to the bowl. Then he got on his hands and knees and crawled all the way back over to that little boy. And he held him and he said, son, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. Can I have a hug? Oh, my God. And John Christensen's watching this. And he's thinking about his 13-year-old daughter who has asthma. And two weeks prior to this, she had couldn't breathe at night. So he took her to the emergency room. And when they got there, the lady who in, took them in acted like she could care less whether that little girl could breathe or not. And John is thinking about that. That's the healthcare system. And all of a sudden he looks and he's in a market and here's a kid getting a hug and he's not even a customer. So he yeah. thought, wow, maybe I found the right, the place I'm looking for. And so he talked to the owner, found out that it wasn't always the best place to work. And these guys decided to be world famous. And so John asked him if he could film these guys. He said, yes. He went out and filmed these guys for several days. And John and I, I've met John and he told me it took him one year to edit the 17 minute video. And he saw in there that these guys do four things, four practices that mm -hmm. anybody can do mm -hmm. in any job, in any environment. And that's what created the fish philosophy. That is, my gosh, that's heart rendering. <laughs> but that is such a, a true statement mm -hmm. that when you put yourself out there and you become vulnerable, you create phenomenal customer service. Just that story mm -hmm. is all about customer service. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's beautiful. I love that. So, so okay, you mentioned it. What's the fish philosophy? Well, uh, it has four different practices. And before we go on, I wanted to mention that when this video that, that this guy did, John Christensen, mm -hmm. it became world famous. It's in, it had been seen in 30 countries. It's the most, most watched video of all time. And 80% of the Fortune 500 companies have utilized the fish philosophy because it's so powerful. It's so powerful. Wasn't that in a book? I remember a book by John Peters. Yes. Wasn't that in Search of Excellence? I think it might have been mentioned I in there. I think he mentioned the fish philosophy <clears throat> and exactly what you're talking about mm -hmm. in the book, In Search for Excellence. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That was phenomenal. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So talk to me about the fish philosophy. Well, the four practices I was telling you about is be there or be there, play, make their day, and choose your attitude. Oh, my gosh. What are they again? First one? Be there. Be there. Play, play, make their day, yep, and choose your attitude. That's it. Very simple. It's not rocket science. It's yeah. very simple. Yeah. It's like the golden rule. It's about doing for others what you would like to have done to yourself. Wow. Okay. So let's start with the first one, and go into more details. So that was okay. the be there, right? Yes, ma'am. Be okay. there. So talk to me about be there. Be there is about being emotionally present. Like when you're talking to somebody, you just look at him in the eye. You don't think, try to think of what you're going to say next. You don't judge them. You're just being there for them. And when you do that to somebody, it's a huge message of respect that strengthens relationships and it works wonders. And so many times we don't do that. In our mm -hmm. busy jobs today, we have it's so true. many things to look at and keep up with. We forget to do that. And without even thinking about it, we are disrespecting the people that we are around every single day that does no, nothing but negative uh, things for relationships. <clears throat> and people know if you're paying attention to them. Yes, they do. People know if you're not authentic. <clears throat> people know if you've got something else or you're multitasking, or you've got something else going on in your mind and you're just going through the steps and mm -hmm. they yes. know it. Yes, they do. They resent that. They so do. So being there means really being <clears throat> there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And the thing I love about these practices, Betty, is the fact that not only do they work at work among the mm -hmm. people that you're working with, Yes. But also the customers, also at home. Yeah. And your personal life. It works just as well. It affects our entire relationships of 
mm-hmm. of, of with everybody in our lives of just being there, really authentically mm-hmm. being there. Yes, very I important. Love that. Okay, so I think the second one was play. Yes, play <laughs> is very interesting because psychologists tell us that we need to have play and fun in our lives as much as we need to be loved or to have control of our lives, right? But what's the thing that we fear the most as we're growing up? Looking stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that too. <laughs> but we've always been taught, hey, if you're working, you shouldn't be playing. If you're playing, you certainly are not oh, working. Oh, this is true. Yes. So think about it this way. If work describes what you do, play describes how you do it. I'm not talking about crazy hat day. I'm not talking about being childish. I'm talking about having a childlike mental attitude on how to come up with creative ways to have fun at work. There's ways that you can do that. I love that. Mm-hmm. I like that. And it's really playing. I love that. And having a good time because when we play and we're having a good time, it what it, it produces some type of endorphins or some yes. type of chemical and we're enjoying what we're doing and oh my mm-hmm. god. It does that. Plus That's plus it's it's giving it's giving us a great feeling. And also when we do that among ourselves, we're having more fun at work. It spills over to the customers. Yes. And if you do that at home and among your friends, it, it increases that even so much more. So and it costs nothing, right? It costs All of these things nothing. you're talking about are not going to cost a company anything. Nothing. It's just having a lighter, a lighter frame of mind. It's just yes. like uh, breaking the ice. I mean, doing some, saying something funny every now and then just to break people up. We used to have a guy that worked with us who was on a big, big uh, deadline with a big project. And two months prior to this, he had been interviewed by the city. And they asked us certain questions, you know, what's your favorite vacation place? And what's your favorite breakfast? And they asked him, what is your dream job? And he said, I have my dream job. And we all knew that he was kissing up, right? <laughs> so fast forward to this time when he's undergoing this unbelievable pressure to get this job finished on time. He's pulling out his hair. He's, walk, he's fuming up and down the hallway. When one of our employees sees this, they stick their head out the door and go, hey, Rob, living the dream, baby, living the dream. And so everybody cracked up. He cracked up. And so just little things like that can, yes. can make your day go so much better. We- I think we're too serious sometimes. We you? are. No matter what we're doing, we take it too serious. Too serious. My wife always says, if it's not, a, if nobody dies, it's not an emergency. This is true. You know. This is true. No dead bodies right now. We're okay. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. Talk to me about the third philosophy. Make their day. Uh huh. Make their day is doing something for somebody else when they least expect it. Gotcha. And when you do something like that, it shows that you value that person. It shows that you're recognizing that person. And none of us get enough recognition. This is true. It could be something as simple as opening the door, taking them coffee, bringing them to lunch, taking them to lunch. And anything you do for somebody, they are going to feel valued and appreciated. When you know that person a little better, then you know exactly what they like. You know exactly what kind of coffee they like, where they want to be taken for lunch. And the more you do that, the more valued they feel. And sometimes we think we know what the other person likes. For instance, growing up, the red rose was the big deal. You know, red rose. If you have a sweetheart on Valentine's Day, you give her red roses. On their birthday, red rose, red rose, red rose, red rose, right? When I'm doing my classes, I'll take a room of 50 people, 80% are ladies. And I say, gentlemen, if you don't already know this, keep your eyes open. Ladies, how many of you in here? If the rose is your red rose is your favorite flower, raise your hand. Nobody raises their hand. Nobody. And some of the guys are having their mouths wide open and going, "Oh my gosh, I didn't realize that." And I, I tell them, I said, "I've made that same mistake for the first five years of my marriage. You know, I didn't realize that the red rose was not Susan's favorite flower. She always loved what I did for her. Uh-huh. But when I realized what it was, the, her favorite flower, <clears throat> excuse me, she felt so much more valued." Interesting. Interesting. Well, the sales of red roses have just plummeted. Well, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> sorry about that. And all the guys who may feel a little crazy right now about about just learning that fact. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, so you make their day. You make them feel feel special. You 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 listen. You're there. What's the next? What's the, the next, next one? And very very important is choose your attitude. Oh yes. And choosing your attitude has <clears throat> to do with being aware of the attitude that you have right now, right? Mm -hmm. And then ask yourself, is this the attitude I need to create a better life for myself? Is this the attitude I need to uh, reach my goals or my organizational goals? And if it's not, you can change it just like that. 
your mind will do whatever you tell it to do. And if you want a different attitude, all you have to do is tell yourself that several times, and you will have this new attitude. And we should never be controlled by our attitude, right? No, no. If you do, should, then we you're have not. The, we have the opportunity to master that. That's right. If you don't do that, you're not in control of your life. That's you're true. allowing other people to control your life. And wouldn't it be nice, Betty, if when everybody came to work, if they could check their attitude at the door? Oh, yeah. Think about that. <laughs> I have an exercise I do with people. Say that we're at a table of seven people, and the exercise I do is I have one person leading the conversation. They're trying to solve an issue. Everybody at the table contributes to that conversation, just like they're having a staff meeting. Yes. Except everybody at the table has been dealt a card, and on the back of that card is an attitude, usually a bad one. Mm -hmm. And they're supposed to continue uh, contribute to this conversation using that attitude. And this conversation doesn't go very far. And after it's over with, you ask people, how did that go? And they said, oh, my gosh, that's, that's just like our, our meetings at work. You know, it just doesn't work. We never got anything done. So attitude is so important, and we all have that choice every day. So all four of these, as you said earlier, they're not rocket science. No. They're not rocket science. And if we remember these four, four things in both our personal and professional lives, our lives are going to be better. Mm -hmm. Oh, so much better. When I started doing this, when I started doing the training, I always thought I did these pretty well, right? But not really, I guess, because when I started doing this training, I could see a difference in our office. Just me alone doing these four fish practices, I couldn't believe the synergy and the energy that was created in the office. So I know firsthand, not just these 80% of Fortune 500 companies who are doing this. I mean, I learned personally that this does really work if you just take a little time and think about other people more than you think about yourself. And if you think about those other people more than you think about yourself, your life will change so much for the better. Yes. So much for the better. I've noticed you do that in our meetings. Um, Bob is the uh, is on our board of directors of National Speakers Association North Texas chapter, and when we have uh, an issue coming up, and and you know tempers, feelings could be flying or whatever, mm -hmm. you're you always come in, <laughs> and you always smooth it out, <laughs> and you do it. Now I know what you're doing. You're using your four <laughs> fish philosophies. <laughs> but yeah, you do do that. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that now that we're thinking okay, about cool. it. Yeah, interesting. So what qualifies? I know there's not too many fish instructors. No, no. There, or there, certified in fish. No, there's not. And there's just a handful of us out there. I'm the only one in Texas and probably just, a, just maybe three or four in the, in the, in the country. And, uh, but I have been, uh, I'm a certified fish philosophy trainer. <laughs> I went up to Minneapolis and I went through their, their training. And uh, I think being in the hospitality business all my life really teaches me about customer service and what, right. what you should expect. And I've been on both sides of that, right? I've been a traveler, you know, mm -hmm. getting the service mm -hmm. given to me. And also mm -hmm. I've been able to give services to people that uh, I come into contact with. So, so customer service uh, has always been important in my life. Uh, because that's, you know, if you're not, if you don't have good customer service, oh. then your business is not going to be, you're not going to be any good. You're not your business is not going to be any good. No. Uh -uh. no. No, you're going to become obsolete very no. soon. Exactly. Right. So, how do you keep the fish philosophy and the fish program? I know is over 20 years old. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, talk to me about how you keep it fresh. How do you keep your fish fresh? <laughs> well, yeah, right. Not always easy. Not easy. We know the cool thing I like about fish is that uh, it has universal human truths about it. Mm -hmm. Human nature never changes, right? Human nature never changes. It's all about how we treat our fellow man, and that mm -hmm. will never change. So the fish philosophy is always going to be relevant. I know organizations are out there. They're always looking for the next shiny thing. But what that means is that the last shiny thing they didn't pay much attention to or it didn't work very well for them. Right. But if people would just stick to one thing, and the fish philosophy is one of those that uh, was shiny 20 years ago, but it's still shiny today. Because. I love it. And you walk which you you walk the talk and talk and well, <laughs> walk and talk. <laughs> but you do that because I know that you embody these principles in your life. Mm. I love that. Um, when a when what can the what can our audience expect when they want to work with you? When they want to reach out to you and say, "Okay, so you are a master fish mm -hmm. fish guy." So, what can they expect when they call Bob? And they say, I want to work with you now. What are our options? Well, first of all, they're going to find a fun guy to work with, an easy guy to work I with. I believe Because that. I know it's all about them. <laughs> it's all about them, not about me. And so I want to know a little bit more about them, their organization. Uh, what are some of their pain points? What's, what's going on right now? And how I can tailor the fish philosophy to meet that organization. 
Uh, it could be something that they want to work on their communications or they want to have better leaders. The fish philosophy applies to all of those things. And so uh, I will find out what they are needing and then I can pr present a proposal to them that matches what they I need. I love that. So you customize your presentations. Mm -hmm. You got the fish thing, mm -hmm. but you customize them mm -hmm. and you make them special and tailored to that audience. Yes. I bet, I bet event planners love you. Well, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to think so. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, I bet they do. I bet they do. So I know that you brought the book, Fish, A Proven Way to Boost Morale and Improve Results. Talk to me about the book. Yeah, this book, uh, Fish, was written about 10 years ago, uh, and it's based on the fish philosophy. And it tells the story of a young lady who's been challenged at her work of turning around the culture of that organization. Mm-hmm. And that's what the fish philosophy is all about, is how you can turn the culture of your organization around for a positive. And it tells a wonderful, great story about this young lady, how she does it, how the uh, fish market has actually helped her do this. And it's a great way to talk about the fish philosophy and in a story book form. Uh, so that's just, this is what this book is about. Everybody loves a story. They can relate to the story. That's what we always mm -hmm. learn in speaking 101, mm -hmm. have the story. That's exactly right. What type of companies hire you? Well, uh, companies, real, like, like I mentioned earlier, 80% you know, of the Fortune 500 companies uh, have utilized the fish philosophy. Lately, I've been working with a lot of cities, uh, associations, uh, organizations of that type. Uh, I worked with some schools. I have a, a gentleman I'm speaking to today, a principal of a high school, actually, who's interested in bringing me out to uh, introduce the fish philosophy of 50 of their staff members, their teachers. Wonderful. And uh, I mean, this works not only in schools, it works everywhere. And we even have a program that works for the students. Uh, oh, I love how that. To introduce the fish philosophy to so them. So it too. doesn't matter what generation you are. Exactly. That's what's so beautiful about this program. Mm -hmm. It's adaptable to men, to women. Doesn't matter what your demographics are. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what your age is. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter where you live, what country you're in. Mm -hmm. These are the basic principles of getting along with people. That's right. Mm -hmm. And making a difference. Mm -hmm. Yep. I love that. Okay, so if someone wants to find out more about the book and more about Mr. Bob Phillips and how to contact you, mm -hmm. what is your website? My website is www.improvingyoursuccess.com. Okay. And for those that uh, may not be looking at the monitor now, that uh, that success is S-U-C-C-E-S-S, -S, S two C's and two S's. <laughs> I had to learn that myself when I created the company. <laughs> okay, so let's repeat that for me one more time www.improvingyoursuccess.com Gotcha. And your email address. Email address is bob at improvingyoursuccess.com Okay. And phone number, the good old-fashioned way. Yes. 972-467-1965. I love it. I love it. It's been so much fun to have you on the program today. Well, I appreciate you. it. I love what you've said. And um, this is a book. This is a philosophy. This is a program that never gets old. Mm -hmm. And it's it's incredibly important for everybody. And I know you add so much to it. I know that. Oh, thanks. I'm positive you do. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so if you wanted to leave our audience today with a message that they can take with them and remember this and then call you, what's the message? I think one thing to keep in mind is that I'm out there helping bring human kindness back to the workplace. I think that's so important because we get so busy now. One person used to have one job. Now one person has five or six different jobs. And it's so important to have human kindness among our fellow workers and the people that we come into contact with our customers. So. You are so correct. I love mm -hmm. that. You're absolutely correct. Thank I you. love it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, Mr. Bob, it's been a pl privilege, pleasure, and honor to have you on our podcast today. Thank you. It's been thank a pleasure you. being here. Thank you, Betty, for having me. <laughs> and thank you. And thank you, everybody out there, for joining NSA North Texas Power Up. Power Up to be better, to be faster, to be stronger. I look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks, Bob. I'm going to go fish. <laughs> I love fish. That sounds good. Let's do okay, it together. Let's go fish. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to Power Up with NSA North Texas. To find out more about today's guest or NSA North Texas, visit www.speaker.org. To find out more about Power Up, visit our Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash groups slash NSA North Texas. And to find out more about Betty, visit www.bettycoffeepresents.com.